Welcome to the shooting show. This week it's the start of the rut and I take an opportune book down in East Yorkshire plus we bring you all the latest news from the shooting world. Okay, we're a week, two weeks off the rut. It's, it's, get, it's getting there, but uh, we're not there just yet. Uh, I'm looking for a, a, a nice thick four-pointer book that's been working this rip field. Uh, and there's a, a barley stubble at the other side, and uh, we're going to try and stalk in and round into a high seat. Uh, he's been difficult to get. I've seen him. He's very sharp and bump his away. But now the barley's been taken. Uh, it's a very tight stubble. Uh, there should be a chance of uh, him coming out onto that stubble, uh, so, so, so that's the plan. stalk around the estate might lead to a book on the ground, but it's also a chance to see what's out there and assess deer populations. I'm rewarded almost immediately by the sight of a doe and kids browsing along the margin. Not the book I was looking for, but I'm happy to see them all the same. <laughs> I thought uh, my luck was in there, but it's, it's a doe with two, two kids, twin kids. Absolutely perfect health, very, very healthy looking doe and two strong kids. Very grand sight. It's not all about shooting deer, it's about observing deer and actually being out here and, you know, and sucking, sucking up uh, the British countryside. Yeah, the only uh, thing that taints uh, the outing is the, the squeal from the quarry in the background. It's uh, it's just on a decibel level that uh, it's really pissing me off. <laughs> Leaving the Doan kids to their own devices, I soon make it to my chosen high seat. No book yet, but there's plenty more wildlife to be seen. Minutes turn to hours. It doesn't look like the wait is going to pay off. I've got a few more promising areas I can try, and time to get moving.
Deer sign is abundant in this location, but with the crops up, a buck can easily take cover and go undetected. Thankfully, I've got a plan. Yeah, it was uh, two hour vigil in the high seat and we didn't see the sign of the buck uh, or indeed a doe or any deer. Uh, what we're going to try and do now is stalk down here. I know he's living in this rape, and you can look at this rape. Look how high it is. Uh, there's a chance it's dry, but there's a, there's a chance down this dry dike here and the hedge that he's sitting on the edge of the rape or, or in the dike or hedge and just walking down, stalking carefully. We might just lift him. If he stops, which they usually do, we'll get a couple of second window to take a shot if it's safe. Yes. So that's the plan. The plan works and after only a few more yards the buck presents himself. He's not going to hang around but I have just enough time to assess the buck and the backstop. It's a safe shot but I'll need to be quick. Yeah, he's down, he's good. Whew. Well, that all uh, happened very, very quickly indeed, but uh, that was the plan. Whew. Long stint in the high seat and uh, yeah, it's great when it works. It doesn't always happen like that though. Yeah, whew. I, I heard him in the rape. He was only 30, 40 yards away. He came out, went back in again, came out, then he stopped, just, just got a chance to get up on the stick, it was safe, back, nice backstop, uh, and just got that chance. And fortunately, uh, the cameraman was uh, on the ball. You know, often we miss those shots, and I can only shoot if the cameraman's on it. You know, it's, it's difficult filming, shooting, and, and stalking all at the same time. Uh, but yeah, yeah, Stuart did good. Okay, he's had 10 minutes. Uh, let's go and see what we've got. Death is soon confirmed, but it was never in doubt. This old buck was dropped on the spot. Well, a, a, a good result uh, after putting some time in. Uh, we stalked into the high seat there. and I, I knew this buck was in, in the area. It's, uh, a, it's a nice four pointer. Uh, I think he's quite old. Uh, I'd seen him on a couple of occasions. We, we had to sit there in the high seat, uh, but nothing doing. The rip is just at the other side of the hedgerow here. Uh, and we're on this barley stubble. Uh, the, the plan was just to come walk the dike walk this side of the hedge and uh, if he was in the edge of the rape or, or in the dike bottom uh, we'd lift him and, and it'd be a case of dropping onto the sticks and, and uh, taking a quick shot if a safe shot presented itself and uh, that's exactly what happened. Uh, he's a really really nice buck in superb condition, uh, beautiful summer coat, he's still carrying a bit of, rate, uh, bit, a bit of weight, uh, just pre rut the, the, the shot was slightly high. Uh, so it should have been in here, but it was slightly high, and uh, yeah, the exit hole's taken out the the spine there, so uh, killed him instantly. Uh, couldn't really uh, wish for a better stalk, really, and uh, some great venison uh, for the ladder.
Time to get the deer processed. I'll be completing an efficient grab it before dragging it back to the vehicle. The cameraman gets roped in to help with the heavy lifting. It's one of the perks of being on the show. It's quite heavy, isn't it? Yeah. That's the stone turn and dusted. I managed to get a successful outcome, but even if I hadn't, this would still have been a very fine day in the great British countryside. It's time to get that one in the chiller. Tricky thinking and a quick book there. And now, it's the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. Austin Coxhead was crowned high gun at the Clay Shooting Classic DTL at Bywell. Over 200 track plays in the main event, he scored a total of 596, which went unmatched by the rest of the field. He also won the Bywell 400 aggregate score across the three days. Meanwhile, Colin Will shot an incredible 99 to top the standings in the British Open double rise. Stay tuned to Clay Shooting Magazine for a full report. Thousands of youngsters tried shooting for the first time at Norjam, the International Scouts and Guides Jamboree. 5,000 scouts and guides from 21 countries attended and they got to sample clay shooting on a coaching line of epic proportions, with more than 20 coaches working in 15 safety cages. It was three times the size of the average game fair clay line, powered by 26,000 cartridges donated by Ely Hawk. It's just been phenomenal, the number of uh, children they've had go through the shooting line. And at the moment behind me there are uh, a bunch of uh, scout leaders eagerly getting stuck into uh, shooting uh, uh, clays right behind us. We've got a good steady stream of kids coming through. We've, we're doing around about five, six hundred a day. We're going to be here for six days. The kids have really loved it. Scout leaders really, really enthusiastic about it. And, you know, loving how professional we are and, and how friendly the coaches are. Staying with Ely, the verdict is in on their new titanium cartridges. In a test for Clay Shooting Magazine, Richard Atkins said the titanium and titanium strike shells are true premium loads for the dedicated shooter. He said they come into their own when targets get tough. Long, fast, departing and edge-on clays can be convincingly smashed with a cartridge like these. You can read the full test in the August edition of Clay Shooting, still on general sale now. And finally, Gavin Gardner's annual auction at Glen Eagles is just a week away. 171 lots will go under the hammer, including sporting rifles, double rifles, side locks, box locks, round action guns and accessories. Check out lot 93, a 12-bore engraved with a phoenix motif by Malcolm Appleby. If you can't make it to Glen Eagles, you can bid online through the Gavin Gardner website. That was the Shooting Show News. Well that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, 
it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Shirt.